remember when I first got this Explorer, this uh, 214270, I wasn't excited at all. In the beginning, it wasn't the one for me. It didn't hit it for me immediately. But then, a few days later, it went kicked in. And I wasn't the only one that felt this way. I remember showing it to a friend as well, and he thought it was boring. He was like, you know, what is this plain look? I want you to give me three comments about this uh, watch. Rolex? Hey, would you buy it? Would you take it over the sub? The, it's, a, it's a very simple watch. And no. Samaritan. No. It's a stainless steel band. I like to switch it up a little bit. But then a couple of minutes later is when it started to kick in. It started to make sense. You know, this simple, no-nonsense design. This is low-key. It's, it's exactly what you need it to be on every occasion. So this is an excellent watch on a day-to-day -day, uh, that I would just as easily buy um, to keep it thought it was really really interesting before we kick off today's video i would like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor Piguet and sons a swiss company that was created in 1989 in geneva they've been in the business for watch accessory for some time and they were kind enough to send through their all new redesigned astronomia x1 watch winder now there's two reasons why this winder is unique and i wouldn't recommend anything that i'm not using number one it's because of its gyroscopic movement essentially it moves in clockwise and counterclockwise rotation for two minutes on stop intervals of eight Minutes. And number two, that it's really well made, it's high end fabrication quality. I've been using this Astronomia X1 for two weeks with no problems at all. I even had it by my bed dress, it's extremely silent, I couldn't hear a thing. This is the true original Astronomia X1, this is the real deal, this is not a copy. Handmade in Switzerland and available in two colors, gold and silver. I've honestly opted for the silver one because I thought it looks cooler. It's offered for 50% for a limited period of time, and the links to where you can purchase them are in the description. Now back to the video. So, this is the reference 214. 270 Explorer that was released at Basel World, of course, at the shoulders of the Explorer Legacy, you know. So, I don't want to get into the history and all of that, there's so many videos about it. But this is when people start paying attention to this 214 270. The contemporary release features some important upgrades, including a larger 39 mm case size instead of the 36, the use of solid link 904L stainless steel on the Oyster bracelet, and of course, the upgraded caliber at the time, which was the caliber 3132, featuring a parachrome hair spring and a paraflex shock absorber for great shock and temperature resistance, which was of course a definite benefit for this rugged adventure watch. Up until two years ago, this Explorer was literally available at every single boutique. It was just right there at the display. It was literally the easiest port watch to get. Nobody paid attention to it. But right now, you'll be lucky to get one. Today, any Rolex AD would tell you that this is a year wait list minimum. That's of course if you can get into the list. And you know the whisper as well is that this might get discontinued. And there's reasons behind this. Of course, there's a lot of videos about the Explorer 2 potentially being discontinued. And that makes sense too. But let me tell you why I think that this might go away as well. Of course, no one knows for sure, but it's not hard to believe. I mean, look at what happened at the Oyster Perpetual 39. It was the shortest production run ever. Two years, 39K size, and it was out. Another reason why discontinuing the Explorer makes sense is the fact that it's the last sport model from Rolex that is still on a 39K size. It doesn't match any of the other sizes anymore. I think it is possible that Rolex may up the size to 41 or calling it off completely. And I don't think they're actually gonna discontinue it, but I think they'll discontinue the 39 case size and maybe move it to 41. Now, if Rolex discontinues the Explorer, the prices, of course, will shoot up. Then I think we'll come down a little bit. So I got this guy for $6,300 about two years ago. The retail price at the moment is about $7,500, I would say, with the aftermarket hovering at $9,800, which is very interesting. I see the 214270 hitting the 12K if discontinued. So this is what I gotta tell you. If you've got one, well done hold it off i think it's going to be a very interesting year for it and if you get a chance to get one then don't think about it just do it with no shadow of a doubt i think this year is definitely going to be the year of the explorer if you guys enjoyed this type of content don't forget to support me by subscribing turning on the notification bell and i'll catch you guys really soon take care